This video shows how I installed my cheap, fully functional DIY septic system in a very remote and unimproved area. I started the project by digging a hole slightly larger than my tanks. I then began backfilling it on the bottom because the native soil in this area is very, very spongy and unstable. I wet the rock down to settle it and then mixed in some raw Portland cement powder to stabilize the rock further. All of this was done with the intentions of providing a stable base in a very unstable area. There was nothing scientific about this step, just mixing in the raw Portland powder with the rock. Now again, this native soil is very spongy and the water table seasonally can be very high. Now I'm adding a small amount of water just to activate the cement powder. I don't want to overwater it and exaggerate the problem. I'm using the tractor to compress it and compact it and really force it down. I'm just regrading it and making sure it's perfect. Checking the elevation. And now I can add my tanks. In this case, the tanks are two 275-gallon totes. They're very common in our area, and I happened to acquire these ones for free. What I did was I drilled a connecting hole between the two, wired the cages together, and then really sealed up the openings around the connecting pipe. I also had access to some old carpet remnants, which I wrapped around the tanks to temporarily prevent the native spongy soil from sifting through the cages and collapsing the tank sides. I'm adding these boards so that I can push the tanks down into the base gently with the tractor. I know the camera lens is kind of creating an illusion here, but I did check the tanks and they were level. At this step, I filled up the tanks with water to prevent them from floating. This also helps keep the edges from collapsing in. Now that I had this set, I could determine the level and grade of my leech lines and I punched those holes. I'm running two separate leech lines at 40 feet each. At this point, I also started filling in between the tanks and around the tanks with some concrete to help provide some stability and structure. These are some short lengths of PVC that will act as access hatches to the tank lids. What I'm doing is adding primer and PVC glue and then rubbing sand into it. This provides some tooth for the concrete to grab onto on an otherwise much too slick PVC pipe. Once I had these pipes placed, what I did was pack some wet, mixed concrete around them. I employed the exact same technique for the tank inlet once I knew where it had to be located. All I'm trying to do here with this is provide a somewhat stable lid 
that will also help weigh the tanks down and prevent them from popping. I had some junk reinforcement wire, I added that also. Like I said, the sole intention here is just to provide a little bit of weight and a little bit of structure. Eventually this whole thing will be covered with porch. At this stage, I'm going to backfill with road base. I don't want to add the native spongy soil back in. Now I've got my leech line trench dug and I'm adding in large diameter drain rock. Now I should note, I don't do septic systems, but I did consult with a few acquaintances that do and they advised on this leech field to keep it at quarter inch of fall or less over 10 feet. So I basically tried to keep it level. Now I'm backfilling here with fine rock. It was also said that you could put a screen over to prevent the fine rock from sifting down, but that it was not 100% necessary. I'm working very carefully around the pipes. I don't want to step on them or crush them. Now again, since I had access to road base, I didn't want to add in the native spongy soil, so I went ahead and filled it up with the road base. Well, everything was wetted down, settled, and final graded, and looked really good. This is not what I do for a living. I did consult with some professionals and was given instruction on how to perform the task. The system is performing and I hope this video can provide you with a little bit of insight on your project. Remember, anytime you're going to dig, always check on what's buried below the ground and always adhere to local building codes.